some other issues today as well, Jared. Some 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 AFL stuff. I was interested to see that James Gallagher is is no longer yep. the list boss at St Kilda. Um, not surprising, really. I don't think. Even though, even though when St Kilda's review was released, they did say on the list the age profile is a strong positive with many of our key players not in, yet in their prime and none on the wrong side of thirty. But we do need to improve our stock of top end talent. But the review concluded that the list management strategy outlined five years ago to drive greater competitiveness initially thought through trades and to rely primarily on free agency was the right move. Mm. He's oh, he's a bit of a scapegoat here, isn't he? I mean, there's more than one person that sits on list management and clearly that was a decision that the club went through to top up with these players and the list management moves that they've made. Yes, it's hard to know uh, whether he's a scapegoat or not, Kane, but uh, I mean... It- it may well be a result of the review. It may well be a result of his personal circumstances. I'm, I'm not particularly sure. But there was a lot of positivity around St Kilda two years ago in the in the trade period, mm. and people were writing articles about how they'd won the trade. And yet other people were saying that that trade, had set, that, that trade period had set them back to a point where it may not get them a flag. It may just put them in, the, uh, in that sort of level below, but um, give them competitiveness. But not get them all the way, and I mean those those stories uh, are, are always only ever able to be told uh, five years down the track. So we'll give it some time, but it certainly didn't help last year's result. Saints fans, you can jump on and have your say on that. Also, Stephen Silvani quickly linked to that job as he has done previously already. I, I'd be surprised if St Kilda aren't heavily trying to court Jason Cripps from Port Adelaide. Jerry's a former St Kilda player and has done a, a really good job. At Port Adelaide, I think he would be prime target number one for them. Now, whether they could get him out of Port Adelaide, I've got no idea, but I'd be surprised if that... Where was the Silvani name mentioned? In the Herald Sun today and and previously been linked, I think, by Damian Barrett on AFL.com. He's got a close relationship with Ross Lyon, I believe. He does, yeah, he does. Or or, or so I've I've heard, so you can understand the the link, uh, the link there. Well, last night we were fortunate enough to have former North Melbourne and now CEO of the Dick Johnson Racing Team, David Noble, who informed us that AFL CEO Gillan McLaughlin had reached out to him to inquire about his interests in the vacant AFL footy operations job. No, I had a chat to Gillan to Andrew Dillon a few few weeks ago in regards to the the GM role that was vacated by Scotty. Um, so that that was certainly a discussion that I'd had, but. You know, the guys, the owners here were a fair way down the path with me at, at that point in time. And, um, yeah, it, it eventuated rather quickly in the lead up to Adelaide um, that, you know, I was able to secure that position and, yeah, very excited to, to take that step. Look, that was just at the start of the process. Um, you know, the window had just opened that they decided, you know, I think with Gill extending and staying on for a bit that, that they were going to try to secure something before Christmas and... Just as that window opened for the for the process of how they were going to run theirs, this yeah I was 95 percent probably down the path, so I was a fair way committed down to understanding um, the business, the requirement from the owners, um, and the opportunity. You can scrub Noble's name off the list, and despite the AFL's ambition to have the vacated role filled by Christmas, this now seems incredibly unlikely, and it's just not ideal. Just recently, the AFL has made significant changes to the game that usually would fall into the portfolio of operations boss. Firstly, the increase from three field umpires to four, which is a mammoth shift in the way the game will be adjudicated and no doubt will certainly increase the number of free kicks paid. Secondly, the decision to scrap the medical sub in favour of a tactical sub. So what's the holdup? Brad Scott was appointed as Essendon coach on the 29th of December. Gil, it's December 13 and the Christmas deadline is quickly expiring. Surely it does not take 10 weeks to find a suitable replacement. The trade period and draft are gone and the draw has just been released. And further assessment of the key areas of the game that needs addressing must be looked at by the new person in this key role. Just ask David Noble. Here are the pressing areas that he sees worth addressing. Uh, I think there's two or three things I I reckon that could be opened up a bit, I reckon, Jared. I think one is the player movement. I'd be interested to see what the player movement like mid-season now is going to look like. I know we've got the the drafts in there, but whether or not there's more scope now for movement, um, you know, I think they've got things pretty good at the back end of the year with the way that that moves around. But mid-season, I reckon that there's 
the scope to look around. Um, certainly, I think the you know the umpires where they sit in the overall context. I still believe that going forward, the umpiring is the only part of of the AFL game that's not full time, and I think that needs some serious consideration going forward. So um, that would be a, a big one. And then I think it's how do we support clubs? You know, how can the AFL continue to support clubs? You know, continue to be competitive going forward. He hits a good point, particularly the middle one. Surely the game would be more accurately officiated with fewer errors if the umpires were full-time. They'd be fitter, more knowledgeable. They'd be able to spend more time officiating at club training during pre-season, which would in turn build stronger relationships with the players. A full-time, lucrative career path would be much more likely to attract some of the best athletes in the country. So Noble makes sense. Unfortunately, he opted not to pursue the job, and the AFL seems to be at a loose end for who's going to take Scott's old role. Furthermore, the successful applicant must be media savvy and more open to speaking to the fans via the media than Scott was previously and others in current leadership positions at the AFL are now. It is vital that we all have clarity on the technical issues that arise most weekends and dominate the media cycle. Unfortunately, it's a closed shop at AFL House right now. Should umpires be full-time? 1300 736 736. What do you think, Jared? Not 100% sure on that one, Kane. I've never been a great fan of uh, full-time umpires. I mean, I sit there and I uh, look how strong you were with that push in the back in the Swans game against uh, with Papley. And I looked mm-hmm. at it and I said, 100% push in the back. You said 100% not. So, you know, what's right and what's wrong is often in the eye of the beholder, unfortunately, in our game. I don't think it should be, but uh, it often is. Now, I don't dispute what you're saying. You may be able to draw better athletes if you uh, pay them enough. But how much do you want to pay? It's like... A lot of these guys are professionals in other careers. They yep. may be making a hundred thousand dollars in in umpiring. Would you pay them two fifty? Would you pay them three? How much would you have to pay them for them to sacrifice their careers? I'm not exactly sure what the number would be. I mean, I mean that's the biggest stumbling block behind it is that I don't think the the umpires want to be full time. Um, but you've got to start the new cycle. Our best umpires, a lot of them are over forty, yep. and, and that's not sustainable and that's one of the reasons I suspect they've gone to four to reduce the workload on them so I mean if you if you if you start from scratch and have a legitimate career path from those leaving school or you target those that weren't quite good enough as footballers to make it but are great athletes or athletes from other codes with a lucrative career path that can last 20 years I mean this is this is a, a very long career path and I think with the advent of, of full-time umpires, they could have the media training required to, to jump on. Ray Chamberlain's the only one I hear speak to the media, so that pushing the back example is perfect. I mean, if you've got some... I might be completely wrong. If I hear from an umpire who gives me the technical reason as to why that was a free kick or that wasn't a free kick, then I'll listen. Um, but unfortunately, we just don't hear from them, and perhaps that is because they don't have the necessary media training because they're not full-time. Yeah, I've, I know plenty of the umpires. They're pretty sharp on their feet. I don't know why they don't do more umpiring mm. or, or more press. But I know they're a fantastic part of the game, and uh, they are uh, incredibly important to our game. So I think you've got to have an open mind on this. I, I just don't think when you know half the ground goes ball and the other ground goes uh, man, mm. I don't think that's going to change. So... Uh, it helps if they speak. I mean, we've, I mean, without speaking out of school here, we're, we're trying to speak to the AFL about the fixture and they just refuse to come on so far. I'm hopeful they'll come on later in the week, but th- this has been the problem for at least the last 12 months. And I'm sure you found that on 3W with Sports Day as well, Jared, that they, they just don't speak often enough to clear up the confusion. And every week there's a confusing issue. Clearly, it's a tough game to umpire and the fans are the ones that lose out because those decisions aren't explained. Yeah, I was going to do an editorial on that uh, between now and uh, before we go Please off. Please do. Just about the about the change. It has changed a fair bit. Uh, I mean, we used to have uh, on Sports Day every Mark Tuesday Evans. for 20 years, we'd have oh. Ian Collins, yep. uh, Mark Evans was there, Adrian Anderson was there. It started with uh, Colo, then Andrew Demetrio, might have been the other way around, Demetrio and then Collins. But uh, every Tuesday, every Tuesday, every topical element was discussed and it was either put to bed or it was uh, uh, at least it was on the agenda and you got the AFL's perspective. And, and right now, I mean, the, the control of the AFL to not put anybody up is, or, or the want to control an, an issue is just to don't talk about it until the next issue takes away from the other issue. And I think it's, it's the same with footy clubs. 
I mean, right now it's it's almost impossible to get anybody from a footy club on any mm. radio station at the and present the time. Yeah, and, and I know the ones. I know they've got other jobs, but it's not that difficult to promote the game. And I've had this out with Gil plenty of times, and he's very supportive. But not a lot changes from go to woe. I mean, everybody's thinking about buying a membership right now. So, I mean, how hard is we're it talking, to get we're on talking and do about a league? We're, we're talking about the A League. Indeed, we are. How hard <laughs> is it to get somebody on to uh, do a Dorothy Dixer interview mm. and uh, to promote your club?